Hi everyone, I'm Johnny Alexander. I'm back again with another episode of Novelist Unwind, here today with Melissa Kosky, and we're here to talk about her latest book written with Mike Napa, Dream Within a Dream. Melissa, welcome. So glad to have Thank you. Thank you. So glad. Thank you for having me. Oh, glad to. Tell us a little bit about um, A Dream Within a Dream. I know it's the third book in a series that you didn't help write the first two books, correct? Or you didn't collaborate with the first two books? Is correct. Right? Yeah, Mike Napa wrote the first two himself. Um, they, and it was under, you know, that was originally planned for three. Mm -hmm. um, he had a major life event um, mm -hmm. that it just made it very difficult for him to continue. So he had actually wrote the first about 20,000 of A Dream Within a Dream. Um, and then he and I had known each other from other things. He was actually my, uh, my agent for a time. Oh, wow. So yeah, he likes my writing and we have kind of similar writing in a lot of ways. So he reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in helping him finish. So I read the first two books. I thought they were fantastic. <laughs> and then he and I had some calls on, you know, where he thought it should go. And then he basically gave me free reign to finish. Wow. Wow. That's pretty, that's an amazing story, actually. Mm -hmm. Just to hand over your baby to somebody. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I feel very honored. Yes. Yes, that's great. Well, it's a great story. Like, I'm, I'm about halfway through, and it is very gripping. A dream within a dream. Definitely suspense. Um, <clears throat> so, I read a little bit about Mike, that he is a avid Edgar Allan Poe fan and mm -hmm. so that plays a huge part in, in not just this book but in the entire series. Um, do, do you share that passion or did you have to do a research on Edgar Allan Poe? Um, I enjoy Edgar Allan Poe. I mean who doesn't? It's so interesting. <laughs> um, but no I don't I didn't have this you know great passion that he does so yeah I had to research it a little bit especially uh you'll see toward the end I really had to get into that that particular poem oh wow <clears throat> so each of the books do they're named for um a, a work or or at least a yeah line of a poem or yeah yeah the first one is Annabelle Lee the second one is the raven everybody knows the raven and, the raven. and then yeah. and then a dream within a dream <clears throat> that's really cool well what else did you have to do to um to prepare yourself to write the book as far as as research um, <clears throat> research was extensive. Thank God for Google Earth, because <clears throat> they um they travel from Atlanta to Jacksonville to Boston back and forth a couple times, and you know it's all kinds of different. I had to get one character down back down to Atlanta, but he can't fly because you know he's going to get picked up by by Homeland Security, and I had to figure out how in the world am I going to get him down there in this amount of time, and oh, it was. Um, but yeah, a lot of Google Earth, just because there's a lot of running, there's some chasing, there's that kind of thing. So those are all real streets that make them up. It's all Google Earth. <laughs> and then um, you'll see at the end, um, Boston, when they're there at the end, is very interesting. I had to do a lot of research on some national memorials, oh, wow. some historical sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people have, have said it kind of reminds them a little bit of National Treasure. Oh, there's a little, fun. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a little bit of that feel in there. Oh, that's so that part was really fun. I really like American history. Yeah, yeah. And you live in Florida, is that right? I do. Yeah, I used to. Lived in Orlando. Ah. Most of my adult life lived in Orlando. I'm in Oklahoma now, but yeah, yeah. So always makes me feel homesick to talk to someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From Florida. <laughs> well, tell us about the characters um, that, that we're following in this series, because they themselves are also just... Um, a, a fascinating couple and very different from what we're used to, to seeing in, in Christian yeah. inspirational suspense. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, Trudy, she's my girl. I love Trudy. I know she, <laughs> she's originally Mike's character, but she's my girl. Um, she's exactly the kind of girl I like to write, you know, she's feminine, but will kick some butt, you know, mm -hmm. love it. Um, that's her in a nutshell. Samuel, he's, one of my favorite characters but it took me a minute to to get him right mm -hmm. um you never know what is really going on under the surface with him but i mean i guess that's to be expected with his occupation right. um dream is kind of actually the same you don't really know what's going on with dream until the very end and even then you're not totally sure oh my goodness okay. <laughs> 
just to bring everybody up to speed, so Samuel is a CIA operative. Mm-hmm. Um, Trudy is his ex-wife. Yes. <laughs> ex-wife but still friend but definitely ex yeah and she runs the the detective agency that I assume because I, I've not read the first two books and I wish I had you know mm-hmm. I was reading this and I wish I'd already read those um that was in the detective agency I assume that they ran together or they started yeah together. They, they ran together when they were married yeah mm-hmm. and then it's hers now and it's hers and yeah. then dream is this fascinating <laughs> <character>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I'm not Very... sure what to make of him. <laughs> Good. That's the idea. <laughs> He's a very nervous, nervous, yeah. mysterious, confused. But is he really confused or is he just calculating? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did a great job getting inside his head, you know, and, and, and until, you know, you told your story of how you and Mike wrote the book I was thinking you know I was wondering okay I wonder you know which one wrote which and I really thought that you probably were writing here uh, Trudy's chapters you know that it just seemed mm-hmm. like that really fit but yeah I mean to get into Dream's head the way those those chapters are written I mean it's just it's it's a fascinating journey to be there <laughs> <laughs> I love what's the chapter that Mike wrote at the beginning it's where he's in the hotel room mm-hmm. you've got read that already and he's yes. yeah He's calling the lamp Wilson, you know, like yes. the movie. Yes. Yeah, I, I love that chapter. That was really, really cool. Yeah, that is. And he's just like, okay, okay. You, you, he's got to be a genius. I mean, you know, he's a genius, but it's like, <laughs> you know, where does? But is he really crazy? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Is he really? Crazy? And too, I thought it was so fun when I was reading your bio that you know Trudy, like you said, she's she she can kick butt if she has to. <laughs> Um, but you're a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. Mm-hmm. That's great. So mm-hmm. how did that enter into the? Um, well, I love that I have the background because then I can write fight scenes properly. Yes. It's kind of my pet peeve where, you know, <laughs> especially in romantic suspense where you've got somebody writing it that has no idea how to fight. Right. Um, that would be me. Was, <laughs> 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 but, you know, I mean, if you sometimes they don't do the full research and it's like no no that doesn't work that way so (laughs) yeah so it's nice that I have the background that that it can be correct yeah now as far as the the guns go I have less I had to do a lot more research on that yeah yeah I always have to research all that stuff too I'm trying to think I don't guess I really write that many fights (laughs) (laughs) I do (laughs) a lot (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is great. I mean, just again, to have that experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One other thing I was really, really fascinated with, because I've uh, done a lot of research on this in a way myself, was the, the art heist, and which plays such a big part in, in this story. And my first, my debut novel w- actually took place in World War II, and it was about the Nazis and the art, you know, and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I was mm-hmm. always interested in in the theft of art, and so... <laughs> Part of your story is about the Gardner Museum in Boston, Isabella mm-hmm. Stewart Gardner. And I, you know, of course, I've read about that. And, you know, like, I think I read a book about Rembrandt and his works. Of course, he was a prodigious painter. So he's got, you know, like hundreds and hundreds of paintings. But there have been more of his work stolen than this. <laughs> you know? And so, and a couple of his works were stolen. So, yeah, talk to us about the, the, the Gardner Museum and that theft and and I you needed know, no spoilers but bringing that into a story like this and, and why that became part of the story. Um, so the Gardner Museum heist was in the 90s um, still unsolved and there is uh, currently I think it's still currently a five million dollar reward for um, recovery of the items and now I was on the website this morning just to you know to kind of mm-hmm. refresh my memory yeah it's a 10, 10 million dollar reward there it's you go returned in good you know wanting them in good condition kind of thing yeah wow. yeah so that you know the having that reward sitting out there that was of course a big motivator for quite a few characters so that that was really important <clears throat> and I think it was a really interesting way to bring in that monetary motivation rather than, you know, somebody who stole a bank or, you know, whatever. It's sure. so much more interesting. And they, 
it lends itself to the history that we brought into the book. So that was fun. Yeah, it, I had it, to do I had to do some research on that though, as far as like how do you properly store those things? Because of where they find them, I have to make sure that they're still in good shape. In good condition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be. You, and it makes you wonder where they are. I mean, do you have any theories on on what might actually happen? <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm thinking at this point, it's probably some. It's probably they're probably in some tiny little collection or big collection somewhere, some random criminal somewhere or other. I'm sure. <laughs> Who knows? It's an amazing story. I mean, they just walked in, tied up the guards, handcuffed the guards, and I know you wouldn't have thought it would be that simple, and they get away for so long. And they got away. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty, pretty interesting. Okay. Well, we talked earlier that you also write under under your true name, <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Coslin. So tell yep. us about uh, tell us about your writing journey and what you usually write and. Um, you know how long it took you to get get published and just uh just some tidbits about about your writing experiences um started wrote wrote my first book in 2009 um i have a bunch of books out under yet another pen name that are not christian fiction mm -hmm. um those are with independent publishers um so smaller than baker um, and now i'm working with baker publishing group this one of course and then i have two more books coming out with them over the next Good. two years. Good. So that's exciting. Those are going to be romantic suspense instead of just straight suspense. Mm -hmm. So that was great. Oh, well, that's great. So, um, you know, how long did it take you from like starting that first manuscript to, to publication? Were you one of those like they overnight success or <laughs> no. 10 years to overnight success. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if overnight is 10 years, then yes. <laughs> um, but I mean, I do have a lot of books out and I get good reviews, but you know, that's independent publishers and I, I'm with great, I'm with a great publisher. I love them, but you know, they're small. There's not, there's no marketing budget and all that, but you know, still get good reviews. People enjoy the books. That's it's still fun. Um, and writing all of those books, you know, help me to get really good at writing yeah so yeah because I you know when I was younger I really was not a very good writer <laughs> oh, really? Just, no it was I was not good at it it was kind of funny but I learn really well as I tell people that's my only talent I learn well uh, I have no other natural talent at all I understand that because I don't have a lot of other natural talents either except writing and but I too I, I learn I learn <laughs> Life mm -hmm. <I'm> learner. <laughs> yeah so I just read a whole bunch about it, got and just got pretty good. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, congratulations again. We want to share this book, um, A Dream Within a Dream. Love the cover. Yeah, they did a great job. They did. They only always and they always do. They just do do great. The third book in the Coffee and Hill series. Mm -hmm. Um, again, just love the Edgar Allan Poe references and the Gardner Museum and just bringing those things together. I think that's what's so fun about writing is that you just bring, can bring in all these yeah. things that don't necessarily go together and then you, th then they do go together. Yeah, so exactly. Sorry. The unexpected. Yeah. So do you have other hobbies then, um, when you're not writing? Um, Wait, well, you work full time, right? So, I do work full time. I'm a property manager. I manage shopping centers. Um, so oh, wow. that's been fun right now. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> luckily, Florida, uh, most of my, sh my shopping centers are all Florida, Georgia. So luckily, we're almost all open now. Yeah, so good, that's, good. that's been very stressful. Um, and yeah. then on my off time, I am um, I'm married and we both have motorcycles, so we ride our Indian motorcycles together. Fun. Oh, that's fun. And wonderful weather for it most of the time, too. That's great. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, so what's next? You said you've got two more books coming from from Ravel. Will they be part of a series or separate from, from this? Completely separate, Completely both of them. Separate. Yeah. Okay. So one in June and then the next one, the next September. Okay, so next June. Yeah, this coming, yeah, 2021. Yeah. Will be the next one. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. That's great. So, final question I ask everybody <laughs> comes on when you're all done writing and you hit the end, what do you do to unwind? 
uh, start the next one. <laughs> you would be surprised how many people say that. <laughs> that's what I like to do. So that's when I'm stressed out, I come sit down and I immerse myself and then I feel better. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I, you know, I, kudos to you for working a full-time job and, and, you know, obviously not even that easy of a job. I mean, I'm sure there's challenges to that and then yeah. the writing because I, I, you know, writing is my full-time job and some days it's just like, I was like, I, don't know. <laughs> I have another job on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily I have, I work from home, so I just have one desk over there and then this desk right here. So I just turn the chair. Oh, that's cute. That's I like that. I like that. Wow. Well, thanks again for being here and congratulations on, on the book and just really appreciate um, you stopping in. Once again, Thank you so much for having me. Loved having you. Yep, available in, tomorrow. Available tomorrow. Yeah. And by the time that when this is posted, it will be available. So make sure. Okay, you, perfect. Yes. Yes. So make sure you grab a copy. Dreams in a dream. Thanks, Melissa, so, so much. Appreciate you being here today. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye.